Yeah, I mean, as soon as you say I live in a van, the first question is, where do you ship? <laughs> it's always, it's just like, what? I'm not asking you. Like, why do we need to discuss this? I just say, well, I do what we did for thousands of years. <laughs> Go to Tesco's toilet. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Hi right, guys, welcome back to another Liberation video. Today we're speaking to Matty, the woodland nomad. He's living full time in his van and we hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, give it a like and let us know in the comments below what you think. And back to it. Well, I'm Matty online, the woodland nomad, and I live in Big Bruce, my van. And I've actually only been on the road in this van for a week. <laughs> my last van I had for two and a half years and then I bought this and I've spent a load of time converting it and I'm finally on the road again. He's a Nissan Interstar, two and a half litre. I honestly don't know a whole lot about him. I thought he was a Nissan. As soon as I opened the bonnet, everything's Renault. So I was fooled immediately. Um, so I actually don't really know anything mechanical, apart from that he cost me a fortune. <laughs> He's a serious wagon built for on the road, um, what would you call it? On the road digital nomad work. So on the road, I work as a graphic designer. Um, COVID, you know, wasn't great for a lot of people, but it did actually benefit me because I ended up working from home. And then by doing that, when COVID went away and we were invited back to the office, I just basically said to my boss, why do I need to come back? And he was like, yeah, good point. <laughs> so we just arranged that I'd work from the road. And then he was like, is there anything else you want to change about your contract? I said, yeah, let's make it two days a week instead of five. <laughs> so now I just work on the road two days a week pull my laptop open and just work away. Just nine to five and that's it. So basically like living in a van is so much cheaper because I'm not paying council tax and rent and all this stuff. So my overheads are so much smaller in the van. So I only need to work two days. Like it, it covers me fine. In fact, I save some money each, each week. So that's kind of cool. And I live really frugally. You know, I don't, I basically only do free stuff. I wild swimming, uh, power kiting, skating, hill walks. So I don't really pay for attractions, so to speak. So that saves me a lot of money and I don't eat out. And a forage, which you'll be surprised can save you a bit of money, which is good fun. So before COVID was probably the most miserable time of my life. I was commuting an hour and 15 minutes each way, working at our shifts, getting home and then cooking and cleaning and going to bed. And it was just, I don't know, it just felt like this cycle that was just draining me. And then the only thing that gave me relief was like going into nature at the weekends. And if it was pissing it down, it wasn't happening. I wasn't getting any nature that week. So I had to wait a whole nother week to get outside. And you know, it just, I just started to get miserable. And then, so it was actually before COVID that me and my ex-partner bought the van and we had started planning to do this. We were gonna move into the van and we were gonna quit our jobs and hit the road. But COVID kind of kicked it into gear and sped it all up. And um, we actually left our flat the night that Boris Johnson said we're going into lockdown tomorrow. So we were like panic, gathering everything up, threw the keys through the letterbox at the letting agent and just hit the road, <laughs> just absolute legged it. So there was loads of reasons why I moved into a van. Um, biggest one was nature, just not getting enough of it. And knowing that I wanted to learn more about it and I needed more time to do that. You know, when I was finished work, I was exhausted after doing the commute back and forth. And, to go into the woods and try and learn this Latin name of this mushroom was just like, that's not gonna happen, I haven't got the brain power. So the idea of being able to live on the road and do what I did on the road was just so appealing. And then it was also recognizing how little time I was in my house. So I'm paying all this money, I would do this commute, I would do my work and I'd come home, that's 10 hours. And then, you know, cook and eat and then I'd sleep. And it was just like, I'm paying a lot of money for this place and I'm never here. <laughs> it just, just didn't weigh up. What was the other reason? There was many. Just the, the freedom of it all was just so appealing. Just to not have to report in every day, every well, five days a week at the office and just have that freedom to decide and to visit new places and meet new people. You know, we stayed in this town for a couple of years and it was just like, we met no one knew. We met the, you know, we had the group that we had and then it was just like all the groups stayed in their bubbles and they never seemed to overlap and stuff. Whereas you go online and watch van lifers or people living alternative lifestyles and there's community immediately. So straight away, just by getting in a van and going on the road, you're part of a community. People wave at you, people offer you stuff. Like there's so much generosity, it's ridiculous. 
So this is Big Bruce. There was a smaller version before him, um, but the word Bruce just meant home. But he's a Nissan Interstar, which is a kind of rare van. I've not seen any other Nissan versions of it. But like I say, it's all Renault, so it's a lie, and it fooled me. I don't know anything about him mechanically. I think he's a two and a half litre. I did manage to build the inside, but I leave this to the, to the professionals. <laughs> so being in Scotland, there's like deer everywhere and it's actually quite dangerous, you know, just driving about and you can't see into the edges of the road at all, whereas that's where you'll see their eyes. So obviously getting a big light bar like that, you see the deer way before they jump out in the road. So it was just like, in the last van, I got a light bar on it and it was just like, I'll need to always have one if I'm going around Scotland. So one of the first things I did was just slap that massive light bar on the top. It opens up the whole road and then you can even see the like owls and stuff you wouldn't have seen because it's lighting up the tops of the trees and it's, it's good, I've, I love it. So it's funny that people say I've got a stealth van and it's a white van, but that's because, you know, they're parking in a town and they want to be hidden in a town. A white van against a background that's full of trees, that's not stealth. So I went green and black and now he is stealth. Like I've lost him myself. I've thought I've, he's been nicked and I've not been able to see him. So yeah, really the idea was just to camouflage me so that if you drive past a lay-by and I'm tucked in the back of it, you won't even see me. At night you don't. I mean, you might catch the number plate and stuff, but typically, He's just completely camouflaged. And it hides all the blemishes because <laughs> he looked horrendous when I bought him. So I bought military vehicle paint and a roller and just painted him. And it probably cost about 120 quid. As you can tell, someone sent me into a hedge. She was square in the middle of the road on a tight corner. I had no choice but just to get in the hedge. So my lovely paintwork has now got go faster stripes, but <laughs> it's just character, isn't it? I don't mind too much. I love having a little light on the side of the van so that you can look out before you get out. You know, if there's people out there, just slap that on and they soon bugger off. <laughs> and then you've got my flu and that's from a little log burner in there that's kept me warm all through the winter. And I love it, absolutely love it. And then on the very top, it's just all solar. There's 460 watts of solar up there to make sure that I can run my laptop during the winter months. During the summer, it's just ridiculous. Like I, I should be plugging into the mains and getting paid. Like honestly, it's too much because it also charges when it drives. So it's just, I've got too much power, but during the winter, you have to make sure you've got enough. So yeah, it's just two massive solar panels, nothing else. But yeah, I put a lock on the back just for a bit of peace of mind. Again, I've got another one of these little lights because originally I was going to have portholes here and here. So I wanted a light on the back so that I could look out and see what's happening, you know, because sometimes you just hear noises in the background or kids messing around. And to be able to put that on, a bit of peace of mind. But I'm actually going to put the porthole on this side now because in order to register a van as a camper van, you have to have two windows on one side of the vehicle. So that's my garage, as everyone seems to call it, but I haven't got many tools in there, so I wouldn't call it a garage myself. <laughs> that's my apothecary, actually, in fact. So this is where I'm storing like all my dried mushrooms and herbs and stuff that I've been gathering on the road. Just this week, I've gathered all of those. So I'm doing pretty well, because when it's sunny, of course, I can just put it in the front in the cab and it's a greenhouse and it just dries out in no time. I've got bare water, which I'm surprised I haven't tucked into yet before getting here, but I've got three 120 amp hour leisure batteries behind my apothecary. <laughs> it's such a good word. 1000 watt pure sign inverter, which runs my laptop really well. You need to get pure sign if you're doing something that's like high tech. And then all my solar comes trickling down the fuses and into the MPPT charge controller. All the usual works. If you're put off building a van because you're like, I don't know any of this stuff. I didn't. There's so many YouTube videos on just how to do every single step. As long as you just follow their instruction and don't just go, oh, I'll assume something, you'll be fine. And then I've got a bag of just like outdoor stuff like my power kites and swimming gear. And for the most part, I've seen that people's beds are about this high, um, but my arse to head ratio <laughs> was not good in their vans. So I've had to drop it a lot lower than a lot of people do. I wanted more living space and less garage. So the foraging journey, you know, like gathering herbs and edibles from nature around us was like, it started when me and my ex-girlfriend found this mushroom on a tree and we were going to a festival and the theme was king and queen. And we thought, we'll, we'll go king and queen in the woods. And we found this big bracket fungus. We thought that would look brilliant as like these shoulder pads. So we took it home. And we were like, it's really squidgy and like fleshy and weird. So we looked up to try and find out what it was. And it was a mushroom called chicken of the woods, which if you're a vegetarian is the closest thing you'll ever get to eating chicken. It peels apart like chicken. And from that moment, it was just like, you can find this outside, like this is crazy. So from, yeah, from then on, foraging just became part of our lives. And then when we separated, it just, yeah, I was, it's still part of hers and it's still part of mine. And now I'm focusing more on medicines. 
So I'm, I'm learning a lot more about herbs that can help us and stuff. So in the back of the van, I've got all sorts of, like I've only been in this van for a week and I had to just go and buy a load of new tubs because I'd ran out because I'm just filling them up with dried herbs. I mean, you'll see there's herbs in the front of the cab now. <laughs> so yeah, and then it's like when you meet people on the road and they're ill, it's like I've got an apothecary that I can just offer them all these like teas that are going to soothe their sore throat or whatever it might be that they're going through, which I just find fascinating. It's, it's knowledge that's lost and I'm trying to like claw it back. <laughs> like one of my favourite things, and actually it's kind of one of the motivators behind moving into a van, is I remember seeing this diagram that just is stuck with me. And it was when you're a kid, you've got loads of time, loads of energy and no money. When you're an adult, you've got loads of money and loads of energy, but no time. And then when you're a pensioner, you've got loads of money, loads of time, but no energy. And I sat and I just thought, all of those situations is a negative. And I thought, if I just didn't give a crap about money and swapped that for time, I'd have loads of energy and loads of time. And I thought, well, that's what I'm gonna do then. So this van only cost two grand for the van. And then because it's like mostly recycled materials, it's, I mean, to be fair, it cost a bit in repairs. There was a couple grand in repairs. And then the build itself was about three and a half grand. But that's because being a graphic designer, I need loads of solar, loads of batteries, battery to battery charger, inverter, the whole works. So that was where most of the money went. In, in the hindsight, compared to a house, you know, these cost me bugger all. So as long as it gets to be five years, that'll do me. <laughs> it's cheaper than rent. I'd say the favorite part of living like this is opening that door in the morning and not recognizing where you are. <laughs> Every time it's just completely different and it's just, you know, sometimes it's not a great view. So, you know, it's busy. You're in a lay-by and the road's really busy and the van's sat doing this, but you open the door, you're somewhere else and you can just change it as well. You know, I've pulled into places and just been like, I don't know, I've got a weird vibe when you just move. And to have that freedom of just always waking up somewhere else is incredible. I just adore it. Negative side of living in a van. I struggle, I actually do struggle. Not everyone responds to you in a kind way. Like, for the most part, it's fine, but you do get people holding horns as they drive past you. It's just kind of, initially, it kind of hits you a bit like, well, that's a bit mean and horrible. It's like someone giving you the fingers. It's like, well, that's not nice. But eventually you just end up being like, you're miserable. You're just, you know, like if, if I don't know, it's just petty, isn't it? And I'm just like, you know what? I don't care, actually. <laughs> Bye, have fun. <laughs> So I don't know, I, I can't find a negative. I just love it, I absolutely love it. And even winter, you know, I, you'd think winter van life, oh, it's awful, but it, it's got its own beauty. It's got its own special things. You know, just being snuggled up with tons of blankets, hot chocolate, Netflix on, it's, it's got benefits too. So yeah, it's, it is hard to find a negative for me. So inside, he's, well, a little log cabin is what I describe him as, but he's made mostly out of reclaimed wood. So I must have spent about 80 quid, no more than 100 quid anyway, on wood. And it's all mainly structural stuff for the, for the bed. The rest is all just reclaimed. Like this wood here, everything that's like that color or this color, that was a rotten shed that had been chainsawed to pieces and I just scavenged through it, found anything that was still usable. And then the counter, which is full of gaps and holes and cracks, but it was an old barn door that was just gonna be burnt. And it was like, well, I really like the color of that. So I saved that. Most of it's just firewood. It was all gonna be burnt and uh, it's all just being reclaimed. So when I started building this whole van, I started right here and bought these tiles. It's kind of hard to figure out where to begin, but if you just pick a corner, so I knew there was gonna be a corner here that was gonna be this big because of this tile. And then from there, I just started building. <laughs> And the original idea of this little bit was to sit with my laptop on it, but I ended up just lying down, quite honestly, <laughs> just sat like that. And then I just moved on from there and knew I needed storage space, I needed a cooking space. So I've got two little cupboards that hold all of, well, most of my food. It's got all my green grocer stuff and dry foods and then all my plates and stuff. And then a big heavy drawer that holds tea, coffee, all my utensils, little kettle. Got a super cheap 25 quid camper thing that explicitly said don't use inside, but you know, I got this beautiful copper sink. So on the wall, there's a little door here, which originally was from ex-girlfriend's cat to get through to the cab. But now it's just for punching anyone that manages to break into the front so they don't drive off with me in the back. Spice rack went in quite early actually, because I love making my own chai teas. 
I've got this where I can dry my herbs during the winter so I can like tie them up, have the fire on and they'll dry nicely there. As you can see, I've already got some in there. <laughs> and then I've got my little glow in the dark mushrooms, which um, I made with like glow in the dark glue gun glue and then put a little UV light there. So I've actually got like a little night light of these glowing mushrooms, which looks sick, but it's just like jet black in the van. So with the lights in the last van I had, it was these disc lights with a road down the middle. And I hated that when you lay in bed, you were just looking up and it was just like blinding. So I found these that you can just angle, which is brilliant. You can just aim them around. So nothing shines down onto me apart from the two here, but I've got a separate switch for them that I can just switch off. So I've just got kind of adaptable lighting. And then I've also got these little puck lights that are like warm light. So they magnetize just around the place. They're just kind of scattered about. I obviously love being in the woods and this was actually one of the last things I did. Being a graphic designer, I have access to, you know, my whole print team. And I was like, guys, can you print something off for me? So I picked a photo that I'd taken that I liked and I just stuck it on the wall. And now it's like, I've just got this huge window and even late at night, it's a sunny day. And it kind of like the, it's kind of following the dark path, but there's always sunshine around the corner type situation. To talk about style, it's kind of like when you reclaim wood, the wood kind of decides the style for you, if that makes sense. Which I love about it, you immediately get character from the wood just by sanding it and oiling it. But I did do a lot of the burnt effect because I really like that. I've just got little storage cubbies here for USB cables and batteries and all that kind of stuff. And then I just keep my clothes up here. And what I did was I did these wooden slats and then carpet so that it's really breathable. Because if you live in a van, you'll know that condensation can build on your clothes quite easily during the winter. So all my clothes fit in those two spaces. And honestly, I don't wear half of what's in there. It's ridiculous. I've got stuff stored at my mum's, so I do a change into the winter and summer stuff. But yeah, I've got too many clothes, but it's still a minimal amount compared to what I had in a house. I got rid of a lot, which is really freeing. It's really nice getting rid of your possessions because they do sort of, they can own you rather than you owning them, I feel. I've always loved driftwood, always loved it, so collect loads of it. And like that one, I can't believe the way that wraps around the guitar head. It's brilliant. Um, and that's actually an edible, believe it or not. <laughs> it's called Old Man's Beard. They use it for, um, they used to use it on ships to prevent scurvy because it's so high in vitamin C. So yeah, some people ask, do you sleep sideways? And it's like, yeah, obviously not. Um, <laughs> this is actually a full king size bed when I put it back together. So this is like my bench, but it's designed to come apart relatively easy. I mean, a lot of van lifers will tell you the worst thing is changing their bed, but I have made it relatively quick. But, and then that just comes up, that slides out. And then that goes on. And then it's king size bed, which I do fit on, <laughs> which is good being my size. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as soon as you say I live in a van, the first question is, where do you ship? <laughs> it's always, it's just like, what? I'm not asking you. <laughs> like, why do we need to discuss this? But that gets asked an awful lot, which, you know, I just say, well, I do what we did for thousands of years. <laughs> go to Tesco's toilet. <laughs> no, <laughs> I go in the woods or I go in Tesco's. It's not that hard. And then it's, where's your fridge? And I'm just like, I don't eat meat, so I don't really need a fridge. My oat milk keeps for four days in a warm temperature, which blows my mind. And my butter, I mean, sometimes I have to chuck the butter, but it's not that bad. Another one is definitely being asked, how do you wash? You know, I'm a wild swimmer. I plan a lot of my routes by waterways. So if I want to get from A to B, I'll, I'll map it on Google Maps and I'll follow that trail and look for rivers and lochs and then I'll detour via them. So I love to just park next to water. Just I, Maybe it's being Scottish and being surrounded by lakes. Lakes? I called it a lake. Surrounded by lochs that I've just got like in my blood to be near water. So realistically, I just swim and I get out and I just don't smell. Like I haven't washed, but yeah, I don't smell. So that does it a lot of the time. Then I do the classic hobo wash with the baby wipes, which every van lifer will tell you they do. But I do also have a USB charged shower and it's literally just like it's self-contained unit. You drop it in a bucket, push the button on it, and it just pumps the water. So with the fire on in the winter, it's, yeah, it's a piece of piss. Just get some water from the lock, put it on the fire, warm it up, put it in the basin, put the pump in, wash. It's just showering like everyone else. <laughs> I think if you were considering van life and living in a van, I would say 
figure out where your finances are going to come from. Don't throw yourself into it and get in a situation where you know you're going to struggle to get out of. But if it's something that interests you, set it as that goal. Break it down into little bits and just keep aiming for it, and you'll get there. Like it's not like I just bought a van, built it, and buggered off in the space of a few months. You know, it's been years in the making of that seed got planted. Just don't give up. Just keep pushing. You'll get there. So yeah, for me, I just I don't see an end. I don't see mortar in my future. Bricks and mortar is just not going to happen. It makes me feel sad thinking about it, actually. <laughs> like, I couldn't... Not that it's, I've got anything against it, anyone that does it, you know. I've lived in Iris until now, but it's... Yeah, it's not It's not something I could do anymore. I would just feel like everything had been stripped from me, you know. It, it'd be like losing a best friend, the lifestyle, all these beautiful gardens, all the freedom. So, as long as that thing keeps running, then I'm going to be on the road. <laughs> So yeah, if you're interested in what I've been talking about and want to know more about what I do and the foraging or van life or whatever, I've also got a YouTube channel and a TikTok page if you want to follow me on that as the Woodland Nomad. So if you are interested, the link is going to be in the description somewhere because these lovely guys are going to share it. Thank you so much for watching and checking out my van and my story. guys thanks for watching another liberation video hope you enjoyed that and thanks for matty for showing us around don't forget to follow him on the socials all the links will be down below if you like what we're doing here guys let us know in the comments and leave us a like on the video because it helps the channel out and we'll see you in the next video